Welcome back. It's time now for Focus on France 24. And we're discussing a new frontier in solar energy. Well, two Swiss scientists believe that they've come up with the first solar-powered plane which can fly both day and night. Well, the solar impulse is the same weight as a saloon car and has the wingspan of an Airbus A340. Early this morning, pilot and co-founder André Borschberg took off from an airbase in Switzerland for a 24-hour test flight. This will prove whether or not the plane's solar panels during the day gathered enough energy to fly safely through the night. Well, joining me to discuss tonight here in the studio, Robert Ayers, a professor at the INSEAD Institute and author of Crossing the Energy Divide. I'll be hearing from him in just a few moments. But first, I'm delighted to welcome the other co-founder of the Solar Impulse Project. His name is Bertrand Picard. He joins me on the line from Switzerland. Mr Picard, thanks very much uh, indeed for joining us this evening. Now, you were also the first person to fly around the world non-stop in a hot air balloon. How significant is this test flight tonight for you? Well, you know, today the, the soul of the project is at, is, is at stake because what we want to demonstrate is that the technologies that exist today would allow an airplane to fly day and night with no fuel. So this is extremely important and the suspense is very high because during the day everything went well and uh, we are now beginning the phase of darkness where we have to hold until the next sunrise on the batteries. Now night, night has indeed just fallen um, over Europe. So far so good. What are the risks though this evening? Well anything can happen because you have to understand that until now this feat is still considered to be impossible. A lot of people don't believe it, it will ever happen. So we can have weather problems, we can have technical problems, we can have pilot problems, we can have energy problems. Everything can happen. And hopefully, the seven years of hard work of the entire team in the design, the concept, in the simulations will allow the plane to fly until the next sunrise. But I have to say, something impossible is difficult to achieve. So it's a pioneering stuff, and the, the answer we can only give tomorrow. But if it's positive, then it's a gigantic leap in terms of promoting renewable energies, in terms of promoting the clean tech, uh, the technologies that can allow to save energy and save the natural resources of our planet. This is really what Solar Impulse would like to demonstrate. All right, Bertrand Picard, many thanks indeed for joining us and best of luck with the Solar Impulse project. Thank you, thank you. We also need luck, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, before we talk to my second guest this evening, let's get more detail on the aircraft itself and on this morning's launch off for the solar impulse, but there's no thunderous roar, no burning asphalt here. This aircraft rises peacefully into the air at just 35 kilometers an hour. The machine's propelled by solar energy, its wings dotted with 12,000 photovoltaic cells. But it's also carrying a cultural statement. The engineers behind solar impulse want to prove that alternative energies can achieve much more than expected. This flight's the product of years of hard work. It was very special, you know, at the moment, I think, that everybody has been waiting for since uh, uh, now almost seven years. I guess everybody was excited, but I was very excited too. The aircraft creators are already thinking about sending the solar impulse on a flight around the world. It's not the first time a solar plane has successfully become airborne, but in a few months, Planet Solar, a photovoltaic catamaran, will attempt to circumnavigate the globe. Weight is our enemy. We need our boat to be robust and solid, but also very light. We're not going to solve all the planet's problems by ourselves, but we can help send out a message and inspire people to start working with alternative energies. Many European cities, such as La Rochelle in France, are experimenting with solar-powered shuttle boats. This one's been in service since last year and can transport 75 people over short distances. While air and sea power is taking off, the road is lagging behind. Most solar power cars are still very small and experimental. Some car makers are starting to develop their own prototypes, but for now, sun power alone is not enough to fuel a regular car. Elsewhere, solar energy is already a part of everyday life. Panels on rooftops and in gardens help to heat homes, sometimes even generating enough electricity for an entire house. But the most impressive solar energy infrastructures are these solar fields. 
from the smaller ones in France, they're far bigger in Germany, Portugal and Italy, and downright gigantic in Almeria, Spain, one of the world's largest solar farms. In the United States, Barack Obama has just freed up some $2 billion to help develop solar energy. Part of this budget will help build one of the planet's biggest solar energy plants. The generator should provide electricity to 70,000 American households and create 1,600 new jobs. In the years to come, the use of solar energy will be powering ahead. Well, joining me now in the studio is Robert Ayers, INSEAD professor and author of Crossing the Energy Divide. Many thanks for being with us this evening. Um, how, how important is this test flight tonight? What will it prove and what, what will change as a result? Well, I have to speak as a scientist and uh, I'm afraid it doesn't prove much of anything. Uh, <clears throat> the symbolic uh, value of this may be very great. Uh, I don't know. That's not my field. <laughs> um, but it's primarily a test of the batteries and, and the lightweight alloys that are lifting the plane. It's not really a test of solar, solar power at all. But uh, we heard um, um, uh, one of the uh, co-founders that he said that this really could revolutionize air travel. It's the first time a plane has flown at night with solar panels. Could it not prove that we could move away from fossil fuels in the future? Well, I hope we will move away. We, in fact, we must move away from fossil fuels. But I think aircraft is almost the last application I would imagine for solar power. Air travel or all travel? Air travel would probably be just about the last. Uh, one of the very last. Uh, automobiles are not a good candidate either. It's almost impossible to, to gather enough solar energy to drive a car. And is that uh, just a matter of that they're used too frequently? That... Well, again, it's a matter of how much you can store in the battery. But in the so case, the battery has to be huge. In the, uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> because the, the plane we saw there, it didn't actually, if we can have a look at it there, I don't think you'd get too many passengers on that, no. on that craft. No. In fact, is there, yes, I guess they have one. But, but, but are these scientists... But that, that must be almost a glider anyway. It is almost a glider, exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's what it reminded me of, actually. Um, now, um, is this not the right way to go, though? Should we not be trying out things like this to try and... You know, air travel is responsible for a lot of the carbon emissions in the atmosphere, Should we, and people do use aeroplanes more and more and more. Um, people have been told to cut down on travel. That doesn't seem to be working. Is this not the, the direction we should at, at well, least be moving in? This, <laughs> this, this, ex this experiment, even if it's, it's successful, and I hope it is, uh, will certainly help uh, get public attention towards uh, solar power. And I, I would look forward to the day when I can look out of my window and see solar panels on the roofs of all of the buildings around me. I think that's that's what we have to look forward to in the in the future. But um, as I say, flying an airplane full of passengers at a high altitude and very fast is just not an application uh, for solar power. Not, there might not be many volunteers to take part <laughs> in the first test flight. All right. Um, are you heartened by recent moves by the US government and also by the, the Chinese as well to, to, to invest more in, in um, renewable energy sources? Oh, sure. That, that's really, that's, that's the big news. That's the good news. So you'd and, like to uh, move away from fossil yes. fuels altogether eventually? Uh, yes, we must, because they're going to run out. And uh, as long as we use them, they're building up carbon dioxide and other uh, uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And there's some arguments about whether we have already gone too far or whether we will reach the tipping point you might say, within 20 or 30 years. I hope, I hope it takes even more than 20 or 30 years because I don't see very fast progress towards climate control, that is, controlling the, um, the build-up. All right. We're going to have to leave it there, Professor Ayers, but many thanks indeed for your views. Thanks to you, I hope, for watching. This has been Focus. More news and headlines coming up.